Alright, Shalawa Makiyam, Wa Akwathiyam, Kahalayam, Wahatha Pa'avath, La, Abanawa Yahawa, Bahashem Shal, Malak Yahawa Shai, Bahashem Shalha, Wakakwadash, Laiwa Lam Yam, Wa Arayam. All praises and the glory to our Father Yahawa, in the name of King Yahawa Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit forever and always. Much love to all the real brothers and real sisters out there that are looking forward to the kingdom of heaven, which is soon to come, where we're going to experience all the blessings of Yahweh by Hashem Yahshai, and we'll never be under these curses ever again. We're going to be the next world superpower and the only world superpower, and have the entire universe to inhabit. Much love to all the brothers out there that are helping sell the 144,000, the real brothers, the house of David, Ha-Bayath Shao Dawada, and we pray to be part of that number, Yahweh Ratiz our Lord willing. Much love to the helpers and friends of the prophets of the men and women that are going to be part of the 144,000 and the one-third. Much love to the one-third Israelites scattered all around the earth, the great multitude that scatter amongst the heathen nations, and even look just like these other heathen nations where they have been scattered too, and do not have the typical Israelite appearance, having woolly hair and melanated skin, but... They still go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the holy, royal, chosen seed line, who the kingdom of heaven, salvation, the covenants, promises, blessings, and everlasting life is only for. And much love to the one-third women and children that are also going to receive salvation through men of the Lord. And this is going to be part two of the manna from heaven and so-called magic mushrooms, because I got more info. And guess what? All the info that I'm going to bring on in this video and even all the info that I have, I, I got more ammo. Yep, I'm bringing out little by little so y'all can absorb it all, learn about it, study it, read about it. Yep, I got way more to bring out. Like I said, I got ammo for days. I ain't done. I know these PMS dudes thought I was done, but nah, I'm not done. You see, all they can do is talk shit and be petty and harass my videos and give me thumb downs and threaten to jump me. But you see, I'm just bringing out fact after fact after fact, article after article after article. I'm bringing out pieces of evidence after pieces of evidence after pieces of evidence over and over again. But before I get into the video and before I get into making their vaginas bleed some more, I want to bring something else up. So let's bring this up, okay? So this is James chapter 5. Verse 16, confess your faults to one another and pray one for another. Yeah, now's the main point. It says confess your faults one to another. Yeah, so we're supposed to confess our sins to one another, right? Well, guess what? I have a confession for all of my subscribers, for all of the Akim now watching all the Akwathium. Several months ago, when I was going through the peak of my hell, when I was in a very unstable living condition, when I was having to sleep outside, when I barely had any money or nothing, I was talking to a brother and I pretty much lost all my faith. Like you know how the scriptures say, even if you have a mustard seed of faith, then you can move mountains. Well guess what, I didn't have a mustard seed of faith. I was completely discouraged. I thought that Yahweh by Hashem Yahshua was no longer dealing with me because I was catching so much hell. So you know what I ended up doing when I was venting to the brother? I ended up cursing Yahweh by Hashem Yahshai, which I deserve death for that. That was wrong. Yahweh doesn't give us more than we can handle. And I should have kept the faith because guess what? I eventually got delivered. Yep. So you're probably wondering, okay, why am I bringing that out of the blue? Well, because the PMS Holland faggots, they said how they have a recording of me from several months ago of when I was talking to the brother and when I was venting and I cursed Yahweh by Hashem Yashai. So you know, what, you know what? I'm like, instead of them exposing me, you know what? I can expose myself because I can be a man and admit my faults. Yes, I deserve death for that. Yep, I deserve death for that. But guess what? You know what's funny? I, I, I'm still slicing them up. And guess what? You see how they can't prove the point? When it, when it comes to trying to prove me wrong, you see, they can only get a little petty shit. They can only try to dig up dirt on me. But notice how they can never prove me wrong. You know why? Because they can't prove me wrong. And the scriptures say this, though. Let's go to... Let's go to Proverbs chapter 24, verse 16. 
For a just man falleth seven times, and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. Yes, so it says a just man falls seven times, and he gets back up again. But the wicked fall into mischief. You see, I got up again, and now I'm on my two feet, and I'm smoking your entire camp with pure facts, and y'all are fucking hating it. Y'all are so pissed off that thought you, that you all thought you knew every damn thing, but I'm smoking the fuck out of your entire camp. See? It said the wicked shall fall into mischief. Exactly. After I did that, I never did it again. I learned my lesson. I learned how to control my mouth, and I learned not to have any more slips with the tongue or sin with my lips. Yep, so guess what? I can admit my faults. It said confess your sins one to another. I'm being a man, and guess what? I can admit it to all my subscribers and all my followers. Yep, I fucked up. D do I deserve death for that? Absolutely. Yep. But guess what? Don't we all deserve death? Yes, we do. Don't we all deserve death, whether we curse y'all, by shame y'all, shy or not? Because guess what? We all were not from our, in our past lives, right? So guess what? Even if you don't curse y'all, by shame y'all, shy orally... You can still do it physically by not following his laws. When you go after the ways of the heathen, which we all did in our past lives, guess what? That's basically cursing how by Shem Yashai. But now let me focus on myself. Now, I did it orally. Now, is that worthy of death? Yes, it is. But let's get a scripture on it. This is Savak chapter 8 and 5. Reproach not a man that turneth from sin, but remember that we are all worthy of punishment. Yep, so guess what? I, I turned away from my sin. But guess what? I'm still smoking you, so what's your point? I'm still smoking you. And y'all still can't put me wrong, and guess what? You never will. You never will put me wrong. Yep, and guess what? Let's go to another scripture. Getting on myself. See, I'm going to get on myself first, and then I'm going to smoke the fuck out of y'all. I'm going to go in full-blown piranha mode and eat y'all alive. So, Sirach, chapter 14 and 2. Blessed is he whose conscience hath not condemned him, and who is not fallen from his hope in the Lord Yahweh. Why Yahweh Shai? Yes, so it says, Blessed is the man whose conscience hath not condemned him. So, guess what? I went off, I committed a sin worthy of death, but guess what? I didn't let my conscience condemn me. Guess what? I'm still on fire, and I'm still more on fire than you all that are talking shit. I'm still bringing out facts and I'm still bringing out advanced knowledge that y'all can even fucking swallow. Y'all want to talk about, oh, when it comes to doing videos and when it comes to the hows and bowers, oh, just get the milk scriptures, just get the potatoes, just get the milk. Yo, but, but y'all can handle the milk. Here it is, I'm talking about plants, but y'all calling me a witch though. Now you're the fucking witch. You're just mad because you're too scared to have your pineal gland open. You're just mad because y'all are afraid to be men, you're afraid of plants, you're afraid to have an open pineal gland. You ever afraid to be on a high frequency because you love your daddy Esau so much, but guess what, when you, when you faggots get a headache, the first thing you do is go in your medicine cabinet and pop a an aspirin, pop a Tylenol, yeah, because you, you love your devil daddy Esau's poison, but you don't love your house medicine, you have poison, and then you have medicine, you have medicine, and then you have witchcraft, out of the earth, that's natural, comes medicine, out of a laboratory, given by Esau, comes witchcraft, aka poison, aka drugs. Yep, so I'm exposing myself, so w what other dirt you got on me? You got nothing. Yes, I, I curse y'all by Shem Yashai, and I'm extremely sorry for it. I'll never do it again. I learned my lesson. I'm confessing my sins. Okay, yes, what else? What else you got? What else you got now? Oh, and, and then they want to say how my woman was ruling over me. No, the fuck she wasn't. My wife, was, my ex was never ruling over me. I, I know that you wish she was, so y'all could try to have some more so-called dirt on me, but nah, she wasn't ruling over me. But obviously that faggot, a dumbass, a.k.a. Adama, so-called Adama, this, this faggot was talking about from the PMS Boston camp. He was talking about how his wife, and this is a so-called elder that's been in the truth for at least 10 years. He was talking about how his wife, his Ephemite bitch, was buying Christmas gifts and baking cakes on a Caesar Borgia. Hey, when it came to my wife, she wasn't celebrating holidays. Now, she didn't celebrate none of that bullshit. Whether it was Valentine's Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas. She, she, when she came into the truth with me, she stopped all that shit. She began wearing dresses. She called me Adonaya. She called me Lord and King. I, um, shit, you think I'd let my fucking wife bake cakes onto a fucking pale-ass, faggot-ass idol named Caesar Borgia? Hell no. Hey, but this elder, this so-called elder, 
an elder, a dumbass. He, he was letting his wife do that. So obviously, his wife must have been ruling over him. He, he didn't talk about rebuking her. He, he, he sounded like he was okay with it. Nah, my, my wife wasn't ruling over me. Hell no. Fuck that shit. Hell no. My, my woman, she never denied me sex. Yep, and whenever she did, guess what? I took that shit. And she didn't care. I, I'll just pry legs open and go right in there. She didn't give a fuck. She liked it. The, the most explosive sex we ever had was when I took it. <laughs> so she wasn't ruling over me. I can guarantee y'all that, but I know y'all hate that because your woman rules over you. Yep. So all y'all can do is get petty little bitch shit, but let's get a little more on me. I'll talk about myself. Yes, let me talk about myself. Let me be my own worst critic, okay? So let me get some more on myself. Let's go to 2 Ezra, chapter 16. And I'll begin at 75. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh is your guide, and the God of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord Yahweh. Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Yes, yeah, so I don't let my sins weigh me down. I'm back on fire. I'm still doing the work. I'm right back in the game. I never did it again. And guess what? I'm slaughtering the fuck out of all you motherfuckers. All you PMS hyenas. Y'all can't put me wrong. All y'all could do is talk shit and be little bitches. That's all y'all are doing. All y'all are doing is gossiping. Y'all are little bitches, and I'm proving it. Yo, you, 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 you had G, um, PMS Chicago, those faggots, talking shit on my channel, and then a day later, they subscribed to me. <laughs> Yo, who does that shit? Who the fuck watches something that they do not agree with? Who the fuck watches something that they know is gonna say negative stuff about them? Yo, and this one's gonna kill y'all. Yo, are y'all ready for your jaw to drop to the ground? And back again on the PMS Holland faggots too. Because I mentioned them in my videos, how in my last video I mentioned how they left a comment on my video in all capital letters saying, you have to follow the law, you drug addict. But I'm not a drug addict. If you're using plants, you're not an addict. And guess what? Using natural things is not addictive. And if you're a dumbass, you won't abuse something natural. But guess what? You know how, notice how I said how I mentioned in my last video how I mentioned how he wrote that in all capital letters? Well, guess what? The video that I put up yesterday about um, a dedication to all the Solar Brothers titled, Do Not Be Ashamed of Your Solar Brother. Yo, he watched my video and he left a comment on that video mentioning how I mentioned him writing in all capital letters. So that means that he doesn't agree with me. They can't stand me. They hate me so badly. But yet this motherfucker took his sweet ass time to go through my entire video. And he pointed out the fact that I said that about him. So, yo, they're stalking me. They're actually harassing me. That's some bitch ass girl shit. Yep, that's them. That's PMS. These are the, these are the men that are supposed to be the leaders of Israel. These are your so-called leaders. Look at, look at their behavior. Look at them. This is what they do when they can't prove you wrong. Yep, they're carnal. They're, they're, and only women get carnal. Yep. They're, they're a bunch of carnal ass bitches. Yep, and I'm proving it time and time again. They cannot prove me wrong. But that was pretty much it on that. Are, are y'all enough of hearing about these PMS dudes? Are, are, are you all sick of smelling that fishy ass blood? Yeah, I'm tired of it too. So let's get into some knowledge, but I'm going to talk a little bit about them, just a little bit more, okay? I know, Akim, I'm getting sick of it too. <laughs> hey, but, but what's a witch, though? Because we keep hearing this term, oh, Ariya's a witch. Wrath of Heaven's a witch. Oh, he does witchcraft, really? Okay, so what's the definition of witchcraft? Well, let's get a basic definition. On dictionary.com... For the definition of witchcraft, it says, the practice of magic, especially black magic, the use of spells. So what does using Yahweh's natural medicine when there's no man-made chemicals in it, what the fuck does that have to do with magic, black magic, and the use of spells? Nothing. So how could I be a witch? Exactly, I'm not. Oh, I'm sorry, but, but PMS goes so deep, right? They always talk about how they go into the etymology of things and how they get so deep. Okay, well, I'm going to I'm gonna get deep for you, okay? So now, let's get the Greek definition. So we know that the word pharmacy 
comes from the word pharmakia. And what does it say? It says the definition, the use of medicine, drugs, or spells. And now where it says medicine there, that ain't talking about Yahweh's medicine because Yahweh's medicine is natural. Yahweh's medicine does not put spells on you. What comes from the earth is medicine, but what Esau creates is drugs. So it said the use of medicine, a.k.a. over-the-counter bullshit, poison, drugs, or spells. Now, anywhere there, where did it say plants? Where did it say herbs? Where did it say manna, a.k.a. magic mushrooms? Exactly, it didn't. So, am I a witch for using what comes from the earth? Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll get deeper for you if you want to. Y- y'all love going on Adam online, right? The etymology website. Well, let's get it from there too. So for the word witch, it says Old English, wis, w i c c e, female magician, sorceress, in later use, especially quote unquote. A woman supposed to have dealings with the devil or evil spirits and to be able, by their cooperation, to perform supernatural acts. Yeah, so what is using plants from the earth and righteousness? You're using it as a medicine. You're not abusing it. You're using it in moderation. What does that have to do with dealings with the devil or evil spirits? It doesn't. So guess what? When you use Yahweh's medicine properly, what are you doing? You're being righteous. So is using your house medicine, witchcraft? Nope. So there's another cut. These dudes are retarded. And that was it on the witch definition. But now let's get to the good stuff. Hoo-hoo! Let's talk about some manna. So now this is on Reddit. And it says manna. It says mushrooms in the Bible. And it says, part one. What is manna? And then it goes to Exodus chapter 16 and 14. It says, And when the dew that was lay was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And Moses said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. Yep, and you had those PMS Mississippi faggots saying, How man it was Yahweh Shai. Wait, so Yahweh Shai was a little round thing on the ground? So Yahweh Shai had to be picked in the morning before the sun came and melted it and before it was infested with maggots yo y'all are fucking retarded y'all are so fucking retarded and I love saying that shit cause y'all think you're so better than everyone y'all think y'all are so intelligent and even that faggot ass Kazakh said that sometimes in the truth you're wrong guess what you're wrong for example manna and the description given to it the color the texture the way that it grows and the conditions that it grows in that can only describe so-called magic mushrooms. Not just any mushroom, but so-called magic mushrooms. But guess what? When we go to Deuteronomy 28, and when we read all the curses that would fall upon us, guess what? Those curses only fit so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. They don't fit no other people, right? So that's how we know that we're the children of Israel. But guess what? When it comes to manna... It fits the same exact description as so-called psychedelic mushrooms. So you, you stupid ass always say how the Bible is written in parabolic form. So how come y'all can't get this? Of course they're not going to say fucking psychedelic mushroom. That wasn't a term used back then. Of course they're not going to say magic mushroom. That wasn't a term used back then. But guess what? It gives you the exact same conditions and colors and textures and the look that so-called magic mushrooms would have. So what is manna? Yep, it's magic mushrooms. So it says, And Moses said, Let no man leave of it till the morning. Notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms. Yes, so they're saying how Yahawashai was the manna. Yes, so Yahawashai bred worms, right? Y'all are, y'all are retarded. And it says, And stank. And Moses was wroth with them. And they gathered it every morning. Yeah, so I guess you how shot was gathered every morning, right? Every man according to his eating. And when the sun waxed hot, it melted. Yeah, so how shot melted, right? Oh, and that proves y'all don't have 100% truth. Because y- y'all used to always talk shit about IUIC when it came to the mark of the beast. Because y'all would always say how when IUIC would talk about the mark of the beast, you said first how they said the mark of the beast was Christianity. 
And then they went from saying that it wasn't Christianity, but that the mark of the beast was an embargo. Oh, so they switched up, huh? Oh, but y'all switched up. Oh, you, you, come on, PMS. You, why I gotta pull a switch if you want me for it? First, y'all said that the manna was chicken and waffles. <laughs> y'all, are, y'all are hilarious. So first, manna was chicken and waffles, and now manna is Yahweh Shai. Oh, but wait, why'd y'all switch though? I thought y'all had 100% truth. If you have 100% truth, that means you're never wrong. When you have 100% truth, that means you never switch up your argument or nothing you say or your angle or nothing. Notice for me, it's been about a week since I put up the first mana video. And y'all hear me saying continually how mana is so-called magic mushrooms. Mana is so-called psychedelic mushrooms. Y'all hear me say that over and over and over and over again. But how come they went from saying that mana is chicken and waffles? But wait, chicken and waffles? No, it, it, it's, it's, it, it could only be one thing. Chicken and waffles, no. It could either be chicken or waffles, but no, it ain't either one of those things. Oh, but now y'all are saying that the man is Yahweh Shai. Nope, it ain't Yahweh Shai either, because it, it clearly says that it was something that we physically ate. And then it goes into it deeper, how it says we beat it into a mortar, and we dried it to preserve it, so that way it wouldn't beat worms, and then we baked it into cakes. Oh, so you tell me we beat Yahweh Shai into a powder... And we baked Yahweh Shai into cakes and we ate Yahweh Shai, so we committed cannibalism? Y'all are stupid. I know y'all are too prideful to admit yourselves. You're too prideful to admit that you're wrong, but it don't matter. The truth is speaking. You see, I, I'm the only brother that's bringing out this knowledge, but I can go hide by myself. I, I don't mind being demonized. Shit, I, I got all my heart's desires waiting for me. Yep, and I already got a bunch of beautiful wives. Yep, I got, I got an Ashrite wife, I got a Manassite wife. I got a um, freaking Judah wife from Ghana. I got a Seminite wife. I already got Isaiah for what happened for me. Yep. So thank you. All, all you're doing is bringing me my blessings. Yahweh Shah said, Blessed is he that is persecuted for righteousness sake. For this is the kingdom of heaven. So thank you. Keep it coming. The, the more you come at me, the, the greater my blessings. Thank you. Come at me some more. I love it. Yep. So let's get right back into it. So, then it goes to verse 23. And he said unto them, This is that which the Lord Yahweh hath said. Tomorrow is the rest of the Holy Sabbath unto the Lord Yahweh. Bake that which ye will bake today. Oh, so I guess we baked Yahweh Shai, right? Y'all are retarded. And seeth that ye will see, and that which remaineth over lay up for you, to be kept until the morning and they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade and it did not stink yeah how come it didn't stink because they uh, put it in dried form the same way you have beef, uh, beef jerky dried figs dried apricot seeds dried kiwi same exact way that way you preserve it and they laid it up till the morning as Moses bade and it did not stink neither was there any worm therein and the house of Israel called the name thereof manna. And it was like coriander seed. White. Yeah, so I guess Yahweh Shai is white. And the taste of it was like wafers made with honey. Yup. Because when you put manna in dried form, that's when it has its highest potency. And that's how Yahweh Ba Shem and Shai want us to eat it, to preserve it. Because when you pick so-called magic mushrooms, they spoil very fast. Yep, and it's clearly given the description, but these retards can't get it. And it says Exodus chapter 16, verses 14, verses 19, verses 20, 21, 23, 24, and 31. It says in these verses, manna is described as small, round, found in the dew. Also, your house shot's small and round, right? And your house shot comes with the dew in the morning? Wow, that makes a whole lot of sense, huh? And when left unpicked, oh, so I guess we had to pick your house shot off the ground. And when left unpicked or uneaten, manna breeds worms and melts into goo. So Yahusha breeds worms, huh? Yahusha melted into goo? Like Frosty the Snowman on a hot summer day? Wow, you GMS guys are so intelligent. Wow, y'all are, y'all are very smart. It says drying or baking, the manna prevents this unsightly decomposition. It says, when dried, manna has the consistency of wafers and the color of coriander seed. 
and it says, do we know of any substances which have every one of these unique characteristics? Yes, and the answer is mushrooms. As most people know, small round mushrooms tend to spring up overnight, especially with light rain or heavy dew. Yep, and dew is water. Yep, and, uh, and, and um, manna, a.k.a. mushrooms, needs a moist environment to grow, and so it even gave the exact conditions that manna thrives in and prospers in and flourishes in. Yep, so that's very easy to get, but since PMS didn't get to it first, they think that nobody else can study more than them or know more than them. So guess what? Since they don't know it, they think that you can't know it because they're stupid. Yep, and notice how it said the manna came from heaven? It didn't literally come from heaven. Notice how it said that because mushrooms are known to grow extremely fast. That's why I said mushrooms grow overnight. And guess what? They grow so fast to where it appeared as them coming from heaven. Now, how can we prove that manna didn't come from heaven? Easy. Because it says that it comes with the dew of the morning. Because if Yahweh sent it from heaven, it wouldn't need the dew of the morning. Because the manna from he- the manna growing in the moist, wet grass, that's the perfect conditions for it to grow in. Yep, so it grows so fast as if it did come from heaven. It- it- it's a fucking parable, stupid ass PMS hyenas. Y'all can't get that? And now it's going some more. And it says, as most people know, small round mushrooms tend to spring up overnight, especially with light rain or heavy dew. However, less commonly known is the reason why psychedelic mushrooms are almost exclusively so dry. Yep, so you really have no choice but to dry them. Because if you don't eat it right away, then it's going to spoil. Yep, so if you want to preserve it, then you have to dry it. And plus it's more prone like that anyways, so that's the best way to have it. And it says, it is because often insects lay eggs in the early stages of a mushroom's development. Yep, that's why Yahweh Shai told us, that's why Yahweh told us to pick it in the morning. So that way it wouldn't get maggots and worms. It says, as the mushrooms ages, the eggs mature and hatch and to sustain themselves, they eat their fungal habitat, creating a rather vile goo and a waste product. Yeah, they begin to spoil and melt. And right away, one surefire method of preventing this is to dry them out. This worm breeding and baking preventative method are traits exclusively of mushrooms. Yep, but but that's talking about wafers, right? Yeah, wafers grow out of the ground. Yeah, chicken is round, right? Yeah, you gotta pick chicken off the ground. Chicken's a small round thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, how is a small round thing? That comes with the dew of heaven. Y'all are, y'all are fucking stupid. And let me plug my phone in real quick. Give me a second. Yeah, I, I don't want my um, phone dying on y'all. So I can make their vaginas bleed some more. Let's get right back to it. And it goes to Exodus 16 and 33. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein. Yeah, so we put your shine in a pot, right? And we preserve your shine in the Ark of the Covenant. That makes a lot of fucking sense. Wow, that, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? It says, and put an omer full of manna therein, the dried magic mushroom, because when you preserve it dry, it lasts forever, pretty much. That's why y'all was here of like when it comes to survival, like having beef jerky, having dehydrated food, because dehydrated food could last like 25 years, 30 years. It has a very long lifespan. It has a very long shelf life. It says, And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a pot and put an omer full of manna therein, and lay it up before the Lord Yahweh to be kept for your generations. Then it goes to Hebrews 9 and 4. And had Shlakia, which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold, wherein was the golden pot that had manna, and Aaron's rod that budded, and the tables of the covenant. Then it goes to Daniel 5 and 3. Then they brought the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple, out of the house of Yahweh, which was at Jerusalem. And the king and his princes, his wives and his concubines, drank in them. In the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall of the king's palace. And the king saw the part of the hand that wrote. Yup. 
And then it says Exodus chapter 16 and 33, Hebrews 9 and 4, Daniel 5 and 3, and verses 5 also. In Exodus, the Israelites save a part of manna. In Hebrews, it says that manna is to be kept in a golden pot with the Ark of the Covenant. For, it says, which for any who do not know is the Holy of Holies behind the second veil in the temple. And then it says, then it goes down. And then it says, summary, actually, let me go to this part. It says, manna is not Hebrew, but Egyptian for a bread of God. Yep. R remember that, because I'm, I'm going to get a scripture on that. It says, manna is not Hebrew, but bread of God. It says, as bread refers to food, quote unquote, food of God, other cultures also have their own words for, quote unquote, the food of the gods. It says the Greeks have Ambrosia, the Mayans have Teonactical, and the Hindus have Soma. It says, curiously enough, the item described is unvaried in these other three cultures. It is mushrooms. Wow, is that a fucking coincidence? So wait, all, so all, all different cultures... They ate so-called psychedelic mushrooms, and they all have similar names to it. We call it angel's food, or angel's bread. And the Aztecs, they call it flesh of the gods, which the Israelites. And the Hindus, even they used it, even though they're heathens, they call it food of the gods. And even the so-called Greeks, they call it food of the gods. Wow, is that a coincidence? So... Wow, why does that line up so precisely? Because it's all talking about the same thing. Oh, but wait, what does the book of Psalms say? The book of Psalms, chapter 78. And, and I, I'm going to get the scripture out again because I got more proof on this. I'm going to get the scripture out later on in the lesson as well. But it says in Psalms, chapter 78. And now begin at 23. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven... And had rained down manna. Now, did he literally rain down manna? No, nope, but he brought down actual rain, whether it was rain in droplet form or rain, aka water, in the form of dew. And when the dew came on the ground, what did it do? It created the perfect growing condition in order for manna, aka magic mushrooms, to grow in. And mushrooms can grow overnight, so it was as if they spring up overnight. Well, they did bring up, they did, they did come up overnight, but it was as if they came out of heaven. And it says, and had rained down men upon them to eat, and had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels' food. Yes, yeah, so it was something we literally ate. Us eating something, that's being literal. That's not being parabolic right there. We literally ate something. But these dumbasses are now saying how the manna was Yahweh Shai. Oh, so I guess we were cannibals then, huh? You fucking retards. It says, man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to fill. He sent, he sent them meat to the full. Yep. And what do you do with meat? You eat it. So that ain't talking about Yahweh Shai. That's talking about so-called magic mushrooms. So it called it angel's food. And what did other coaches call it? They called it uh, the food of God, bread of God, flesh of the gods. Yep. Is that a coincidence? Nope. So it's talking about so-called magic mushrooms. It says, yep, and it says, curiously enough, the item described as unvaried in these other three cultures. It is mushrooms. Most commonly in tea, although ambrosia was more of a jelly, a food taken with spiritual intentions. And now it says, for the summary and conclusion, it says, the food of the gods in at least three other cultures was explicitly mushrooms, which implies a high probability of manna being the same. And guess what? It is the same because we already proved it time and time again. While the evidence located in John is debatable, the example involving Belshazzar and Daniel is much less refutable. However, given the characteristics described in Exodus with at least one of those traits being exclusive to mushrooms, there is no doubt in my mind. Yep. So there we go right there. And guess what? I got, I got another one to bring out. I got more info. I got ammo for days, like I said. Yep. Now, this is on a website called jarastafari.com. And this one says, Manna, hallucinogenic mushrooms from heaven. 
and it says, Now, just by the title, I'm sure that some of you are wondering what it's all about. Well, it's simple. Manna, the bread from heaven, is a hallucinogenic mushroom known as the Amanita Mascara. Yeah, and some of y'all may have seen uh, Amanita Mascara. You're probably like, no, I haven't. You're probably like, what is that? Well, guess what I'm telling you you have. You're probably like, how can I tell you? Easy. Want me, want me to tell you? Y- y'all ever played Super Mario? You know those mushrooms that Mario gets? That gives him spiritual power? Where he turns into a giant? That red mushroom with the white specks? Yeah, that's an actual real mushroom called the Amanita Mascara. Wait. Oh, so Esau, he's putting the truth in plain sight. Now, why would Esau put that in a video game? Guess what? There's actually another an- animated, uh, another animation that shows the power of um, mushrooms, A.K. Mana. Alice in Wonderland. She ate mushrooms. Yeah, but guess what? Esau even puts mushrooms in video games because Esau knows the power. Yep. So it says it is a, hallucin- a hallucinogenic mushroom known as the Amanita Mascara. Think I'm nuts? If you are educated in mushroom picking, as far as when to pick and the weather conditions, listen to this. Oh, where does it go to? It goes right to Exodus 16 and 14 again. And when the dew that was gone up, behold, upon the face of the wilderness, there lay a small round thing. As small as the hoarfrost on the ground. Yeah, notice how I mentioned hoarfrost? And you notice... That whenever you see who for us, who for us spreads out in all different directions. And when you notice, if you ever see videos like the ones I posted about how to grow mana, you'll see that when mana grows, it grows in all different directions. Oh, resembling what? Resembling who for us. And then it says, Numbers 11 to 9. And when the dew fell upon in the camp in the night, Oh, why? Because mush- manna goes overnight. M- magic mushrooms go overnight. It says the manna fell upon it. It says a quote-unquote whore for us is a fungal growth that is just a round dome-shaped spot on the ground. Oh, so too is the amanita, a.k.a. psychedelic mushroom, in its first stage of growth, as other mushrooms are. This tells us also that this growth was, quote-unquote, as the whore for us on the ground. As a poster hanging on a tree or bush. Its location in quote unquote the wilderness demonstrates it was not cultivated. And it says for those who don't know, mushrooms grow in the cool dark of the night. The best time to pick these mushrooms is in the morning so it is not out of place to read. And then it goes to Exodus 16 and 21. And they gathered it every morning. And when the sun waxed hot, it melted. It says nothing unusual here either. It says mushrooms do not continue to dry when the sun heat and light is on them. It says when more than that was needed was picked, what happens? Let's see. Then it goes to Exodus 16 and 20. Some of them left of it until morning and it bred worms and stank. Yep, it began rotting because mushrooms go bad very quickly if they're not picked. Because we read in the last article how a lot of different insects, they laid their eggs in it. So you got to pick it fast before maggots get infested in it. So it says Exodus 16 and 20. Some of them left of it until morning and bred worms and stank. Nothing odd about that because mushroom is only a fungus. And yes, there's good fungus and there's bad fungus. And mushroom is good fungus, so it belongs in our body and it comes from the earth. And yes, it comes from a seed because mushrooms come from spores and spores come from seeds, you dumbasses. I know your, I know your vagina's been in some more too, so make sure you get a new tampon. It says nothing odd about that because mushroom is only a fungus and cannot sit long out without rotting. So how does Israel preserve these precious jewels? Exodus chapter 16 verses 23 to 24 it says bake that oh so now we're baking it so you telling me we we baked your house in a pan so we made a cake out of your house shy no y'all are retarded shut the fuck up please please just shut the fuck up and humble your dumb asses up it says bake that which you will bake today and see it that ye see it and it did not stink nor was there any worm therein 
It says another way of preserving mushrooms is to keep them in honey. Yup, and in the scriptures, it speaks about how we preserve the men with honey. Because honey is a preservative. Another way of preserving mushrooms is to keep them in honey. Gee, I wonder if this is why the quote-unquote promised land is flowing with milk and honey. Seeing as milk is the main ingredient in soma, yet in soma is another type of so-called psychedelic mushroom, which I will discuss later. Yup. And then it goes to Exodus chapter 16 and 31 and it says in Exodus and Numbers we are given an even more important clue to understand this mushroom's botanical identification so it says Exodus 16 and 31 it was like coriander seed white Numbers chapter 11 and 17 and the manda was of coriander seed and the color of bdellium and it says, when the Amanitas, now get, get, get a picture of Super Mario, to pause the video, get a picture of the Super Mario mushroom. You'll see the red mushroom with the white specks. That specific type of mushroom is called the Amanita Mascara. And that's, that's, that, that's a form of manna. It, it has psychedelic properties. And now it's going to give off the characteristics. And it says, numbers 11 and 17. And the manna was as coriander seed. And... The color of bdellium. It says when the amanitas, the Mario mushrooms, first appear, they are covered in a universal veil, which is white, like the coriander seed. The coriander is a flower, and when the coriander flower blooms, it is mostly red and partly white. Oh, that sounds like the Mario mushroom to me. Yep. Esau hides everything in plain sight. It says the amanita, too. When it is fully grown, it mostly is red and probably white. The white specks being the last part of the universal veil. But delium is not a color per se. As a secondary term of the word, it means spotted or blotchy. Just like the white patches on the Amanita. Woo! What? Come on, PMS. Come on, PMS. Come on. Come on, where's your tampons at? Snatch the, get the thong out your fucking ass. Come on, PMS. Y- y'all are getting slotted. Y'all are getting slotted. For real. Yep, and that was it right there. And I got some more articles. I'm kind of getting low on time, but I can get this one also. Now, this is on a website called HiddenMeanings.com. And, and, and it's titled, Illegal Drugs in the Bible. And it says, Greek writers knew of the pineal gland, and so did Jacob of the Bible. And then it goes to the scripture, where it talks about Jacob wrestling with an angel. And then it goes to Genesis, chapter 32 and 30. It says, and Jacob called the name of the place Peniel, for I have seen Yahweh face to face. What? Peniel? That word sounds familiar. That sounds like the pineal gland. Yeah, so guess what? Jacob, his pineal gland was open. And when your pineal gland is open, what does it do? It gets you fully in touch with Yahweh by Hashem Yashai. It fully opens you up to the fourth dimension. And you're on the highest vibration possible. The same way when you have five bars of cell phone reception on the phone, well, when your pineal gland is fully open, you have five bars of spiritual cell phone reception to Yahweh by Hashem Yashai. Yup. So it says the question, who was, the, who was this man who wrestled with the angel high on something other than the spirit? It says the place of enlightenment is Peniel, a.k.a. Peniel. It says Jacob sees Yahweh face to face and calls the place Peniel. And Yahweh Shai also identifies the place of enlightenment. And then it goes to Matthew 6 and 22, where it says, If thine eye be single, your whole body shall be full of light. That's talking about your pineal gland. So yes, is the pineal gland important? Yes, but they have a problem when I speak about the pineal gland. When that's like one of the most important things in your body. But they got a problem when I bring that out and they want to call me a witch. Because they don't want you to be healed. All these One West Kemp's work for Esau. Why would they have a problem and why would they want to beat me up and jump me? 
because I, I'm already getting threats that people want to jump me. Why would they want to jump me just for speaking about manna and just for speaking about plants? Because they work for Esau. And it says, the single eye is the pineal gland, also known as the third eye. It says, the single eye is the pineal gland of the brain. It says, Jacob was filled with light at pineal because he saw Yahweh face to face and Yahweh is light. Yep. And what's in your pineal gland? DMT, dimethyltryptamine. And then it says, it says illegal drugs in you right now. What illegal drugs in us? I wonder what it's going to say. It says your whole body shall be full of light, says Yahweh Shai. And the single eye or the pineal gland secretes DMT into the brain. And DMT is an illegal hallucinogenic called dimethyltryptamine. Yep, and why is DMT the most illegal substance on the planet? Because Esau does not want our pineal gland to be open. Yep. And then it says, It would seem reasonable for us to assume that there is set apart from our three-dimensional physical reality, a reality where Yahweh dwells, yep, the fourth dimension, and which it's only accessible when one transcends the limits of the human brain. And how do we get in contact with the fourth dimension? Fasting is one of them. Seam of attention. But what about when it comes to things that we consume? Yep, you guessed it right. Manna, so-called magic mushrooms. And it says you don't have to take drugs. And again, when something's in plant form, natural, it's not a drug. And I proved that many, many times. And we even went over the definition of witchcraft. I gave you three different definitions. And neither one of them said anything about plants. Yahweh gave us a dietary law when it came to the animals. But Yahweh did not give us a plant law. And yes, mushrooms come from seeds, you, you retards. So Yahweh said we could use every medicine, every plant. It says you don't have to take drugs, but they're built in. It says Yahweh has built in DMT into the human brain, and it's available to take you where you need to go. It says what you must do is consume yourself in meditation, praying or meditation. And this is something that most people have a reluctance to do. Yeah, and how else do you open your pineal gland? By eating manna. And Israel don't want manna. All, all, all these faggot ass PMS dudes that are talking shit and trying to call manna witchcraft. Yo, these were the same dudes that were in the wilderness 4,000 years ago that didn't listen to Moses. And when Moses told them to pick the manna, they were too fucking afraid to have their pineal gland open because they're little faggots. And they, they, let the, they let the manna spoil and breed maggots. Those were the same exact retards. Those were the same two thirds 4,000 years ago. Yup. And hold on, let me get a drink of water real quick. All right, all set. So it says, heavenly manna will certainly get you high. It says, when we discuss the element of Yahweh, or spirits, or angels, or those who are passed on, being accessible only when high, when one is high, preferably through naturally secreted DMT, we discuss the question of bread from heaven, manna, aka mushrooms. It says, scientific research tells us that manna is actually an hallucinogen. And I'm going to prove that in the scriptures too. It says, knowing this, we should have a better idea where the bizarre biblical stories come from. Yup. And why am I going to prove that manna is a hallucinogen and that Israel was tripping? Let's get it. Let's go to Exodus. Now, it talks about in Exodus, the 16th chapter, about the manna, right? How we ate it and all that. But now, let's go to Exodus, chapter 20 and 18. Now, this is after Moses received the Ten Commandments. Now, listen very closely, okay? Listen very closely. Exodus 20 and 18. It says, and all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings. What the fuck did that say? Hold on. 
Listen again. Exodus 20 and 18. And all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings. Now tell me, when's the last time you ever seen thunder? Last time I checked, thunder was a noise. Now you can see lightning because lightning is light. But when's the last time you ever seen thunder? Have you ever seen sound? It said we saw the thunderings. Now why were we able to see thunder? Because from all that Anna, I said, I said Anna, I meant to say from, because from all that manna, we were tapped into high realms of consciousness, and guess what? We were able to see sound and hear colors. And guess what? When you go on manna, people call that hallucinogens. But really, you're not hallucinating. You're seeing things that are actually there, but you're in a high realm of consciousness because the fourth dimension is all around us. But with that bare naked eye, we can't see it. But the way that you get tapped into those high realms of consciousness and other dimensions is by using mana and having DMT and all these different spiritual substances like ayahuasca as well and peyote, which are all plants and they're all from the earth. Yes, yeah, so we just read it. So that proves it ain't talking about no waffles and chicken. I, I, I never had a so-called hallucin um, hallucination off of no waffles and no fucking chicken. But when you have mana and your pineal glands opened up, you sure get in touch with the fourth dimension. Yep. So said that we saw thunder. So it said, and all the people saw the thunderings and the lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they were moved and stood far off. Yep, so, so that's talking about so-called hallucinations. But really, ain't no such thing as hallucinations. Just seeing things that are really there. It's kind of like, say you're going to a, say if you're looking at somebody on an x-ray, but before you x-ray them, you can't see their bones, right? You can't see through their skin or through their flesh. You can only see that when they're on the x-ray, right? And you can see their, their skeletal structure. Same thing with mana. When you're, when you're on mana, you're on, a high, you're on a heightened vibration and you're in touch with the fourth dimension and you see things you normally don't see. Yep. And then it goes in to saying, it says the, the Bible prophets were stoned, but not with rocks. This is important because if indeed the biblical prophets were stoned and hallucinating, then our holy book is one that may indeed tell us some of the bizarre nature of the subatomic we refer to as heaven or the place of angels to Yahweh. The manna is described in the book of Exodus. It says, Exodus 16 and 4, again, we're going to get it over and over again. It says, and when the dew that lay on the ground was gone, there lay a small round thing, as small as the hoarfrost on the ground. And when the children of Israel saw it, they said it is manna. For they didn't know what it was. And Moses said unto them, This is the bread which the Lord Yahweh have given you to eat. And Moses said, Do not leave any of that till the morning. But they didn't listen to Moses, and some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms and smelled bad, and Moses was angry with them. It says that above description fits magic mushrooms. It says that is a description from the Bible concerning manna, found in the early morning, and if left, it rots, fills with worms, and smells. It says, now compare this with the description of something not mentioned by name in the Bible. It says manna was round, was found on the ground in the dew, would melt to mush, if not dried or collected on time, and would breathe lava. Yeah, so I guess that description fits chicken, right? I guess that description fits waffles. I never seen waffles spring up from morning dew. Never. And I, I, I don't know how she had to be picked off the ground, or else it would rot and breed worms. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It says, it says, manna was round, was found on the ground in the dew, would melt to mush, if not dried or collected on time, and would breed lava. All unique characteristics of mushrooms. When dried, it was like wafers of bread, and its color was like coriander seed. Yeah, so I guess we dried Yahweh Shai, and we, we cremated him, right? And we preserved his ashes in the Ark of the Covenant? Fucking idiots. And its color was like coriander seed. The consistency and color of dried mushrooms. 
not just any mushroom, so-called magic mushrooms. Yabba says, there is your manna, food from God that takes you places you can't get to any other way. And then it says, the Bible's description provides all the unique characteristics of mushrooms. It says, the proposal is that biblical manna was actually mushrooms, and of course, it became the food of the gods. Yep, and what's and hold on real quick, let me pause right there. Let's go to Genesis. Food of the gods. Now we read in Psalms, and I'll get it again for you. Let's go back to Psalms real quick and then I'll go to um, Genesis. So, Psalms chapter 78. And it says 25. Actually, I'll begin at 24. And had rained down men upon them to eat, and had given them of the corn of heaven. Man did eat angels' food, and he sent the meat to their full. Yeah, so right there it says angels food, right? And But a, another nickname for manna is flesh of the gods. And who's the gods? Let's see. We know already, but let's break it down for the bleeding vagina faggots of PMS. Genesis chapter 1 and 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. But wait. How come when we go to Genesis, the first chapter, we see God with a capital G, but a lowercase o and a lowercase d? But then, when we go to Genesis, the second chapter, we see God in all capital letters. So what's going on here? When we see God with a capital G and a lowercase o and a lowercase d, that's talking about the angels. Because right there, that comes from the word Allah. Not Allah as in Islam, Allah as in Hebrew. Spelled A-H-L-A, not A-L-L-A-H. So in Hebrew, that word God right there comes from Allah, which means Allah the powers, a.k.a. the angels. So wait, it said flesh of the gods. So right here we see God also. So the flesh of the gods, a.k.a. what? Flesh of the angels. That's talking about what? Manna. But in Genesis, the second chapter, it, it says Lord God with capital letters. Why? Because that's when it's talking about Yahweh himself. Yep. So man is called flesh of the angels or flesh of the gods. Now, how come all these different cultures gave the same different name for mushrooms? Whether flesh of the gods, bread of the gods, meat of the gods. Why? Because it's all talking about the same exact thing. The same way when it comes to the great flood. Uh, in every land, every country, every city, every village... Uh, um, when it comes to folklore and tales all across the earth, they all have a story of the great flood. They all have tales talking about giants. Why? Because it really happened. So how come all these different cultures, even if they're not Israel, because you have people like the Aztecs, the Mayans, the Incas, they even call it flesh of the gods. But how come even when it comes to the heathens, they call it flesh of the gods? You know why? Because even they use manna. Even they knew the power. But since Israel is so fucking retarded, Israel don't even want to return back to their own heritage. So even these heathens know this shit. But Israel is fucking stupid. Especially these PMS faggot ass hyenas. For real. So you see, we're proving this time and time again. Yep, and guess what? Don't you know when you eat manna, it breaks addictions? And I'm still gonna do my manna, I'm gonna do my manna testimony when it, when it's nice and hot on a nice cool day because it's been really cold and rainy lately because I want to do it outside. But when you eat manna, you'll notice it gives you a very holy, divine, angelic feeling. It makes you not want to sin. It makes you want to be perfect. Yep, now you see why it says in the scriptures where Yahweh said he tested us on whether we would eat manna or not to see if we would follow his laws or no. Yeah, when you eat manna, it fills you with the Holy Spirit. But wait, it's called um, the bread of the angels, right? And we know that the angels are perfect. And the angels don't sin. So guess what? When you eat manna, it makes you less likely to sin. You'll notice that your lust goes away, addictions goes away, your depression goes away. Like, it, it, it makes you feel like a god. When you eat manna, I've had manna three times. In, oh, and for all the fucking retards out there, I've only had manna three times. I had manna back in October, and then I had it a month later back in um, November, and then I had manna a week and a half ago. So I, I can't possibly be a junkie for only using it three times. 
and I can't possibly be a junkie by using something that's not addictive and that comes right out of the earth for you, for you, um, you PMS Holland faggots that called me a junkie. I'm not a junkie at all. I use it in moderation. I respect it. And guess what? Man, is so powerful that you don't even want to have a lot of it. It's the same way when you drink strong alcohol. You take a shot or two, and it's so powerful, you're like, whoa, I'm good. You're like, I don't need no more. Like, you ever be at a party, and you drink, and you're good? You're at just the right level, and somebody asks you, do you want to drink some more? You're like, nah, I'm good. And then they put the drink to your face even closer. You're like, I'm good. I said I'm good. Just let me chill. Yeah, like I said, remember when I read the articles about manna? And it said how people said that they felt the positive effects after seven months of using it once. Yep, and Esau knows this. There's many studies about manna and DMT use where people say it breaks their addictions and how it cures their depression. Yeah, it makes you feel like an angel. When you have manna, you will feel like you're in heaven. You will feel like you're in fucking paradise. And not to brag, but I know that I'm one of the, spirit, the most spiritual brothers out there. And you brothers know you can believe me, but guess what? You don't got to take my word for it. I'm telling you the benefits. Yo, I'm telling you the benefits. When you have manna, you will, it, it puts you in such an angelic state. It feels like wickedness don't even exist anymore. It feels like you're already in the kingdom. Yep, and that's how Yahweh wants us to feel. We're supposed to be filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not called angel's bread for nothing. It makes you feel perfect. And, and it makes you want to keep the laws of Yahweh by Hashem Yashai. Yeah, but, but PMS don't want that though. They want you to remain in sin. Something so beautiful that's given to us, that's so angelic and causes the most beautiful euphoria that, will, that you will ever feel in your life, that has no side effects, they want to keep you away from it. Yeah, but they're stopping the one because the true Israelites are still going to get it. That's why Yahweh Shah said it, his sheep cannot be plucked out of his hand. So all you're doing is bringing more subscribers and more enthusiastic brothers and sisters my way. I even have sisters asking me about manna. Beautiful ass women too. So even women get this shit. But these faggot ass dudes can't get it though. Yep, so it says... Oh, and it goes into this. It says the Bible description provides all the unique characteristics of mushrooms. It says the proposal is that the biblical manna was actually mushrooms and of course it became the food of the gods aka angels bread or bread of the angels as it was referred to because people were having hallucinations as a result of ingesting it yep and I proved that in Exodus it said we saw the thunder in and thunder is a sound it didn't say we heard the thunder it said that we saw the thunder so what's that talking about? that's talking about so called hallucinations but was it really an um, hallucination? nope because when your pineal glands open, you open up to higher realms. You, you go beyond the third dimension. Yep, and the only way you can know what I'm talking about or experience it is if you try it. It's, it's trying to ex explain to someone what sex feels like. You can't. It's something you got to do yourself. For real. And it's like when someone asks like, oh, like what, like, what does kiwi taste like? What does flan taste like? What does pizza taste like? It, it, it tastes like what it is. Everything has its own unique texture, sweetness, bitterness, saltiness, softness, chewiness, crunchiness. You just got to do it. That's the only way. That's the only way you're going to ever find out. It says, it certainly gives the statement, manna from heaven, a whole new meaning, doesn't it? Yep, like I said, it feels like you're in heaven. It, it feels like you're literally in heaven. And when you have manna, you will not regret it. And for you brothers that have had manna before, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is the best fucking feeling you will ever feel in your life. It's such a beautiful feeling that even a trillion dollars would not give you. If you, would, if you had manna, and if you felt that godlike euphoria, that angelic euphoria, and once it was over with, and somebody offered you a trillion dollars, or the option to have manna again, you would burn that fucking money, and you would have manna again. Yes, it feels that beautiful. Yep, it ain't called angel bread for nothing. It's not called magic mushrooms for nothing. It's magical. But again, we don't deal with magic, really. It should be called supernatural. On the right-hand side through your Hawa Ba'ashem Yaoshai. And it says, no wonder Moses wandered in the desert 40 years. He didn't want to leave. Yep. 
and it says this magic mushroom mana was hidden away in a very special place. It says the biblical mana description is the same as the description of mushrooms. And the fact that the manna was kept in the most holy place as described in the Bible, giving credence to the fact that the biblical prophets were high on something. Yep. And notice how when we would burn incense in the temple, Yahweh said to never stop burning it. We had to burn that incense 24-7. And why? Remember, what was in the incense? We, I, I read in my psychedelic video how all those different compounds like the sweet cinnamon, the calamus, the, um, the, the olive oil, the frankincense and myrrh, they all have psychoactive compounds. And what do those psychoactive compounds do? They open up pineal gland. And I brought up in one of my previous videos how frankincense stimulates your pineal gland. So guess what? Yahweh by Shem Shai, he always wanted our pineal gland to be open. But these retards can't get it, and they call it witchcraft. Yep, so Yahweh, he always wants us to be so-called high. But is it? But what does it mean to be high? A high what? People say high. High what? A high vibration. This is how Yahweh wants us to be. And now you see why Yahweh fucked us up so badly? And now you see why these heathens have been fucking us up? Because when we stop consuming manna, when we stopped the holy incense burning, our pineal gland was, became calcified, and we were no longer close to Yahweh by Hashem Yahshai. And guess what? We lost our spiritual power, and they fucked us up, and they conquered us. And let's prove it. Let's go to Second Chronicles chapter 29, verse 7. Also, they have shut up the doors of the porch, and put out the lamps, and have not burned incense, nor offered burnt offerings in the holy place unto the Lord Yahweh of Israel. So we so we stop opening. We stop having our pineal gland open, and what happened after? Wherefore the wrath of the Lord Yahweh was upon Judah and Jerusalem, and He hath delivered them to trouble, to astonishment, and to hissing, as ye see with your eyes. For lo, our fathers have fallen by the sword, and our sons and our daughters and our wives are in captivity for this. So what happened when we stopped eating manna and we stopped the holy anointing and we stopped burning incense that made our pineal gland open and it put us in the highest vibration and it put us in line with Yahweh by Hashem Yashai? Yahweh by Hashem Yashai turned his back on us. We lost our spiritual cell phone reception. Our spiritual internet shut off. Our spiritual Wi-Fi shut off. And we, we, we went spiritually offline and we got fucked up and the heathen got power over us. So yes, we're supposed to get high. Getting high naturally is right in the Bible. We read it when it came to the holy anointing and the incense burning. And when it comes to manna, it's right in the Bible. And that puts a whole new meaning to the term high priest. What did the high priest do? They would burn incense. Now, what did that incense do? It opened their pineal gland and made them high. It, it, it got them into those higher realms of consciousness. And they were connected to Yahweh by Shem Yahshai. This is right in the Bible. You cannot argue against this, dumbasses. All you PMS hyenas. Yeah, keep flagging my videos talking shit, because guess what? I'm winning. Keep coming at me. Y'all are losing. Yep, so it says, the, the biblical manna description is the same as the description of mushrooms. And the fact that this manna was kept in the most holy place as described in the Bible. Giving credence to the fact that the biblical prophets were high on something. And let's look at the mushrooms as the hallucinogenic from Wikipedia. And then it says, psilocybin mushrooms, also called psilocybin mushrooms, are fungi that contains the psychedelic substance psilocybin and psilocin, and occasionally other psychoactive tryptamines. It says, according to the BBC, the first documented use of psychedelic mushrooms was in the medical and medical and physical journal in 1799. A man who had been picking mushrooms for breakfast in London's Green Park included them in his harvest accidentally sending his entire family on a trip. And it says above, it says mushrooms that contain psychedelic substances, psilocybin and other psychoactive tryptamines. And now it says, psychedelic mushrooms contain the same stuff that is in your pineal gland. 
Yeah, and what's in your pineal gland? DMT. Yep, and guess what? The, the, the psychedelic compound in magic mushrooms and mana, that's called psilocybin, the molecule of psilocybin is 100% identical to the DMT molecule, dimethyltryptamine, which is produced in our pineal gland. So are we supposed to be using this? Abs are fucking lootly, 144,000%. We're supposed to be using this. Yep. So it says, and I, I'm about to end this in a few minutes because I'm running out of time. If, if my other phone was working, I, I would go. I would make this two hours. But hey, I got no problem making your vaginas bleed some more. Just make sure y'all go to the store and get some more tampons ready. It says higher doses carry the increased possibility of a surreal event known as ego death, whereby the user loses the senses of boundaries between their self and the environment, creating a sort of perceived universal unity. Users may experience intense feelings of connectivity with the higher power. Wow. It says users may feel a connectivity with a higher power. Now, that's why it's called Angel's Bed, because after all, the 144,000 used to be angels, right? And now we're down here in human form. That's why it says in the book of Jude how we're in this everlasting change of darkness, talking about these mortal bodies. But the 144,000 were the first spirits created after Yahweh Shai. Yep, and why is it called Angel's Bed? Because it puts us somewhat back in our angelic state. And guess what? That's why it's called the Bread of Heaven. And what did Yahweh Shai say? Yahweh Shai said that the kingdom of heaven is within us. Now, notice how it said that it gives us connectivity to a higher power. What higher power? Yahweh. And I've read before that manna, aka mushrooms, is in a classification, a category called entheogens. And the word entheogen is a Greek word. Now, what does the word entheogen mean? It comes from two Greek words. The first word entheos, which means full of God, inspired. And the word genistai, to come into being. So when you put those two words together and you create the word entheogen, the literal translation of the word entheogen means, quote unquote, that which causes Yahweh to be within an individual. Ooh, come on now. This shit's too easy. Come on now. Yep, so what does eating manna do? What does so-called magic mushrooms do? What does DMT do? What does frankincense, myrrh, sweet cinnamon, um, calamus, olive oil? What does peyote and sassafras do? It brings you close to your Howard Bosch, Shem Yashai, because your pineal glands open and you're on a high vibration. It's that fucking simple. And it says, users experience a connection with the higher power. And it says, John Hopkins University studied the spiritual effects, mushrooms, and a spiritual feeling of higher power. Yup. It says, look at the first paragraph above what I just read, where people experience intense feelings of being connected with the higher power. And it is believed that this is what is referred to in the Bible as the bread of God. Come on now. Y'all can't fuck with me. You ain't a fire like me. You can't shine like me. Come on, PMS. Yo, aren't you tired of your vaginas bleeding? Come on now. I'm getting this time and time again. I'm reading this time and time again. And then it says the participants were closely observed for eight hour intervals in a laboratory while under the influence of psilocybin mushrooms. It says one third of the participants reported the experience was the single most significant spiritually experience in their life. And more than two thirds reported it was among the top five most spiritually significant experiences of their life. What? Oh, but that's witchcraft though, huh? Even though it's right in the Bible, right? Yup. Now it says significant amounts of time can be spent in deep philosophical or introspective silence. This introspective mindset, if negative, can often be painful and uncomfortable for the user to experience and can last minutes or hours. It says users can lose touch with reality in varying degrees and their egos may undergo a number of separations. Yep. Now, is it for everybody? No, it's not. Can everybody handle alcohol? Nope. Now, doesn't alcohol make people violent? Don't people get into car crashes and fuck shit up when they get drunk and go on domestic violence rampages? Yes. 
Now, when it comes to mana and DMT and all these other spiritual compounds, it only works if you're a spiritual person. If you're just a piece of shit or a nigga, then it's going to make you more of a nigga because it ain't meant for you. It's only meant for spiritual people. The same way how you probably heard how like like over like 70% of women can never achieve orgasm. You know why? Because they're not in touch with themselves. They, they don't have a mind-body-soul connection. So when you have no mind-body-soul connection, you're not going to be on a high realm of consciousness. But when a woman is spiritual, when a woman's passionate, she can achieve orgasm. But one thing you always say that when women have sex, or even when they masturbate, they can never orgasm. That's because they're not spiritual. That's because their pineal gland's calcified. So when your pineal gland's calcified, it's not going to feel good for you when you have men or DMT. Because your Howard, he don't want you having it. That's why your Howard Shah said, it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But unto them, it is not given. It's only meant for spiritual people. That's why it says in Amos, the third chapter, Yahweh revealed her secrets unto the servants of the prophets. It ain't meant for everybody. If it don't feel good for you, that means it ain't for you. The same way y'all drink alcohol, some, some people get vomit off of alcohol. That means it ain't for you. But when I drink alcohol, I feel like, oh, oh my gosh, yo, when I drink alcohol, it feels like I'm in the honeymoon stage of like a relationship. It feel, I feel so warm inside. I feel like I'm in heaven when I drink. Yo, and when I have mana, yo, mana is like alcohol times 100. All of the benefits times 100, but none of the side effects. Yep, and it's natural because we read it out of the scriptures. We gave the description, the way it grows, the characteristics. We named everything. Yep, and my camera's about to run out of memory. So this was it, but I got more info to bring out. I got more ammo. Yep, my magazine, my clips are loaded, and I'm all ready to go. I got unlimited ammo, so I pray that all this is edifying. So this was part two of how the manna from heaven is so-called magic mushrooms. So I pray that this was edifying, faith boosting, and spiritual uplifting. I'm going to make some more vaginas bleed. I'm going to bring this spiritual slaughter on some more. So with that, I want to say shalom and peace.